Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Crafternoon with 11N Senior Center. Today, we're going to talk about our make and take kit to make a pinwheel. If you picked up a make and take, you get a lovely little paper bag. Got some instructions printed on it as well, just in case you want a little step-by-step -step guideline to follow along with. In your kit, you're going to have uh, an eight by eight piece of paper, and we're using a heavy duty card stock. It helps keep the shape. You can certainly use any paper that you would like. Uh, the thinner the paper, um, might be a little less durable. So it depends what you want to do with it. And you will also have a thumbtack, tiny little thumbtack right here. And you're gonna have a skewer and you have to have your own glue and your own scissors and that's it so with your eight by eight piece of paper i've already cut mine just to make this go faster so pretend yours isn't cut because it's not in the sack you are going to do a diagonal fold corner to corner and run your finger or a pen or another implement to really make sure you have a nice sharp a seam going diagonal across the paper and you're going to open it back up and you're going to fold the opposite direction once again really working that seam to make sure it's a nice crisp seam then you're going to open your paper up i like to mark mine with a pencil next but you can just eyeball it so from the center when you see your paper when you fold it both ways, you'll be able to find the center of your paper, okay? From that center, you wanna go up one of the creases on your diagonal fold about a third of the way. I like to give it a little mark. And I do that on each of the diagonals on those little folds, okay? Because then you're gonna take your scissors and just like we've already done, you're gonna cut down from a diagonal corner, going down the diagonal fold to that uh, third of the way mark that I did with my pencil. And again, you don't have to mark it. You can just eyeball it. Maybe about two chomps of your scissors. It depends how long your scissor blade is. And you're going to do that on all four corners of our paper. So then it looks kind of like this little wonky, partially cut piece of paper that wants to be triangles, okay? After you get it cut, then you're just going to take down, take one of these new corners that you have, and you are going to gently fold it toward the middle, overlapping that cent the center just a little bit. I like to give mine a little squish I'm not pushing it down to fold it sharp. You want a nice curve. You catching those nice curves will allow air eventually to get caught in there, which will help turn your pinwheel. And you can do that with each one. I like to kind of audition it and give them that little squash squash before I break out the glue. This way, it's like training the paper to relax in this position. It's making sure it's going to be how I want it to be and I don't over, over squash any of the folds. All right, looks pretty good. So now I'm going to uncap my glue. I'm gonna, this is a really big glue stick. You don't have to have a jumbo glue stick. <laughs> I just do. All right. Once again, we're going to do that same process again. So I'm bringing it to the middle, kind of adhering it down. Going to put some more glue on. Just kind of rinse and repeat, working my way around, making sure it gets stuck really well. And they are going to want to pop back up. You do want to make sure these little, I'm going to call it a tail, these little tails overlap because you're going to be driving your pin down in there right so you want to be able to capture all of them 
All right, and sometimes I have to hold back here just a little bit in order to get the glue on. I know my glue looks purple, but it dries clear. All right, I'm going to take this fourth tail down. It's the one I like to spend the most time placing because it's the one on top. All right, and I'm just going to hold it in place for a moment. Try to make sure that glue is holding everything before I let go. All right. Let's pay attention to your skewer. Your skewer, I don't know if you can see it. I pre-did this part, so it's going to look really easy for me. And I know it popped up. So if you have a tiny, tiny drill bit, you can certainly have a, a go and run a tiny, tiny hole through your skewer. I just like to use a thumbtack, the same thumbtack I'm going to end up using to hold my pinwheel in place. And I line it up. And I'll just spend a little time. This is where you got to be really patient and really careful so you don't squish your thumb. If you try to push really hard on the get-go, often or not, it just slides off. And, uh, you know, you can crack the wood because skewers aren't very big. You do want a sharp thumbtack. You could even use a nail if you wish. But I just sit there and I just gently kind of twist and push and twist and push, like whittling my way into the skewer. Um, this can be a great project for, you know, grandkids to help with too. Ha ha. So gently get it in there and you don't have to get, you know, all of it all the way through. I, I like to let it peek out the backside just a little bit. Because then we're going to take it back out. The reason I pre-do it is so I can see where that hole is. Because as soon as we try to pin the paper on, you lose all that visibility. I'm going to come back over here to my pinwheel that's trying to run amok. Definitely one of those projects where it helps to be able to sit and hold it for a minute. All right, just lining those tails back up. I'm going to carefully take that pin. And ever so carefully push it through the paper. I kind of know where my two fingers are on the back side. I kind of purposely point them, uh, put them on the sides of the fold, kind of as an anchor point. And then I'm just trying to push the pin through the center and I magically get it on the sides of my fingers. Again, gently working its way in is the best way to go. If you just force it too much, sometimes you catch your fingers and that doesn't feel too good. So then I have the pin back sticking out the back side. And I've got that hole that I made in the skewer. So now I just have to kind of line them up and put the pin back in the skewer. Again, I'm not going to push it really hard. Oops, see, I just pushed it too hard. Because if it gets too tight, I'm going to use my glue stick top to push it back. It holds the paper too tight against the skewer and then it won't spin. And of course, one of the fun things about a pinwheel is that it can move. There. Hard to, I can't. There you go. <laughs> See how much lung power I have. This is good lung exercise, blowing a pinwheel. So there you go. So that is our pinwheel. All set to go, all pretty as can be. And it can spin. So there you go. That's what you'll find in our make and take this week. Um, we do have a couple here at the Senior Center for you. Um, just, so you might have noticed, but the obvious pointer here, um, besides being cardstock, having it be two-sided cardstock, meaning there's a, one design on one side and a complementary design on the other side, I think really makes them pop. It adds that pizzazz to your pinwheel. Um, if you don't have two-sided cardstock, 
You could certainly um, glue two colors, uh, two pieces of paper together. Um, you could even do that with extra wrapping paper you have laying around. Just glue two, <laughs> two pieces together so you have a contrasting um, pattern on each side. And we'll have to get a little excitable with your uh, glue stick there to get it down. Because, of course, when you cut it apart, you know, you're not going to want it flapping in the, in the two pieces of paper um, catching wind individually. You want them to work together. Um, if you're doing something for just for decorative purposes, then certainly that is a great option because you might not necessarily be worrying about how well they actually spin, but just more as a decorative item to add to a planter, to add to porch decorations or a wreath, or even just a little birthday present bag just for that fun whimsy of childhood. Um, great way to add some beautiful color and celebration. We hope you guys have a great afternoon. And from the Lebanon Senior Center, you stay healthy, stay well. We're thinking of you. Bye-bye.